chapter three test review day two and you have these problems already and why does this seem so small to me does this seem small to you make it bigger it says if the, if you're given this find d2y over dx squared what's that second derivative. second derivative and so it's an implicit differentiation problem with a second derivative which means you find dy dx right but then when you go to find the second one you're going to have to substitute the dy dx in that place of that next one okay so here we go derivative of 4x squared would be 8x derivative of y cubed would be good and derivative of 5x would be okay and then what do i do from there Okay, so subtract the 8x, so that gives me 5 minus 8x, and then, all right, so to get the dy dx by itself, we divide by that 3y squared, so I suggest putting a box around that, because you're going to have to find it again. It's just easier on your eyes, okay? You don't have to put a box around it. I will be looking for that answer though. Like what I do is I have like so many points if you get to here and then points beyond that. So like if you only make it to this, you still are gaining, you know, points. You've, you've gotten, you know, earned some of the points. So now to find d2y over dx squared, I need to take the derivative of that, which means what? Quotient. So the derivative of the top would be negative 8 times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. I personally would write the derivative of the bottom first because it's smaller. The derivative of the bottom would be what? 6y dy dx times the top all divided by the bottom squared. The reason I say that, okay, is because, and this happened yesterday to several people, you had the minus, then you'd have the five minus eight X, then you'd have the six Y dy dx at the end. What people fail to do, they remember to distribute this, but they don't remember to distribute the negative to both. So if these are separated, that needs distributed and this needs distributed. It's like double the work. So if you put them together as one at the front, you're going to remember it and it's only one set of words. Does that make sense? See what I'm talking about with that? I did have this happen several times on the very first question on yesterday's test. Okay. All right, so. I have d2y over dx squared equals, this gives me negative 24y squared. This gives me minus 30y dy dx. And this gives me plus 48xy dy dx. All over 3y squared. Oh, I never did square it. Yep, you're right. Thank you. It should be 9y to the 4th. Good call. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. I think I said the bottom squared, but then I never actually wrote it, you know? All right. So now from here, I need to plug this dy dx in place of each of these guys right here. Your other option is to plug it in up here. And then distribute, you could do that too. You, you could get the same answer. Okay, so 5 minus 8x, hold on. I need it somewhere so I can see it when I move this thing up. So I have negative 24y squared minus 30y times 5 minus 8x over 3y squared plus that over 9y to the 4th. 
I can't leave it like that. I mean, if you do, you're not going to get all the points. Let's just put it that way. Okay, we've got to simplify. We are not permitted to leave fractions inside of a fraction. So I have negative 24y squared. When I multiply these, the 3 reduces the 30 down to a 10. And this y reduces this down to a y to the first. So I end up getting a minus 5 minus 8x over y, something like that. Oh, I left my 10 off. Hold on. Something like that, which needs to distribute to this. Like, this means 5 over y. This means 8x over y. So when I distribute the 10 to that, I get negative 50 over y um, plus 80x over y. But now I have to do this guy over here, too. Well, the 3 reduces down the 48 to a 16. This y reduces this to a y to the first. So what I have right here is plus 16x times 5 minus 8x over y. Or 16x times 5 over y minus 8x over y. So when I distribute this, I get plus 80x over y, because there's a plus in front of that. And over to here, I get minus 80 and 48, 128, x squared over y, all divided by 9y to the fourth. Kind of ugly. All those denominators are y's. I could just multiply everything by y, and they would all disappear. So I'm going to multiply the top by y and the bottom by y. But when I multiply the top by y, I have to distribute it to everything there. Oops. So I have negative 24y cubed minus 50 plus 80x plus 80x minus 128x squared all over 9y to the fifth. And it looks like I can combine a few things there guys here. Negative 24y cubed minus 50 plus 160x minus 128x squared. It does not matter what order you have those. Okay. Did I do something wrong mathematically? Okay. Question. That's a d2y over dx squared. Okay. Oh, that's pretty ugly. All right. Next one, just a simple one, really. Um, the things that I'm putting in this one that I'm looking for is like that x to the seventh over 14. <coughs> How are you doing with that? I'm checking that. You know, Remember, that's the same as 1 14th times x to the 7th. So when you multiply it out front, it's 7 14th or 1 half x to the 6th. Okay, it's my new derivative. The other thing is, what if I put a 2 and an x under the radical? How do you deal with that? Okay, so here we go. We're just finding the flat out derivatives. Derivative of 4 is? Okay, derivative of negative 5x squared, negative 10x. Derivative of x to the 7th over 14, I just did over to the side, right? Plus 1 half x to the 6th. But how about this next one? It's a minus. One third x squared, good. Now, I have a minus here. This means 2x, both of them, to the one-half power, right? So the derivative, the one-half is going to come out front and knock down by one. But what's on the inside stays the same. Then I peel that layer away and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 
2. The 2's reduce. This negative power means go downstairs, right? So this is 1 over the square root of 2x. Right? It is a power chain rule. Okay. Questions on that? A body moves along a line with this position function on the interval from 0 to 5, with s in meters and t in seconds. I like underlining those so I don't have to look for them later. Be able to find the average velocity on the time interval, okay? Average velocity means I need two points with these two x values, 0 and 5. I plug them into that position function to get the y value. When I plug the 5 in, I get 25 minus 35 plus 12, which is negative 10 plus 12, or 2. Okay. Once I find my two points, I just simply find the slope. That is your average velocity. So 2 minus 12 over 5 minus 0, which is negative 10 over 5, or negative 2. But don't just leave it at that. You have to label it as well. Velocity is always your meters per second. So that is average velocity. Okay. And it also says, be able to find the instantaneous velocity. What do I do different for instantaneous velocity than average velocity? Take the derivative. So instantaneous velocity, I need S prime of T. Derivative of this guy here is 2T minus 7. And it says at a time of 2 seconds. So if it's just, what is an expression that represents the in instantaneous velocity? You'd say 2T minus 7. But if they want it at a particular time, you plug the time in. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Don't forget to label them. Meters per second. Velocities are always in meters per second. Okay. The speed at a time of 2. What's the difference between speed and velocity? Always positive. So it's the same as at the time of 2, right? It's S prime of 2. What is the absolute value of it? So you take that same answer and just find the absolute value of it. 3 meters per second. That is your speed. Okay. Acceleration at a time of 2. Well, acceleration is going to be the derivative of the instantaneous velocity. It's the second derivative of the original function. So let's see. Acceleration, I'll move it down here, is the derivative of that, which is just 2. Or the derivative of velocity, I could say it like that. Or the second derivative of the position function, right, which is just 2. How do I label acceleration? Uh-huh. You got it. Meters per second squared. Only the seconds are squared, not the meters on that. Okay. Then determine if the body changes directions and it's times that this occurs. So a body changes directions, it's walking this way, and then all of a sudden it changes directions. But when it does, what happens to my velocity? It's zero, and then I turn and go in the other direction. And then I have to stop again to turn to go in the next direction. So it's wherever the velocity equals zero, okay? So it changes directions. Let me get the color. When the velocity, or s prime of t, equals 0. So we take where is 2t minus 7 equal to 0? It is 
that t equals 7 halves or 3.5. That is a time. So how are we going to label that? Seconds. Okay. It only changes directions if it's like positive and negative on either side of it. But think about this, this original problem. This is a parabola, doesn't it, right? That is also giving us that vertex. Okay, so determine if the body changes directions and the times that it occurs. So it does because as it's coming down this right here, when the slope is zero, that's what that's referring to, it changes directions. Okay, so that would be the answer for that one. Questions on? They're pretty straightforward. We'll be doing more with that, um, where you're describing the path and you know all kinds of other stuff. But for now, that's as far as it goes. Um, see, there's more coming later that I <laughs> that you don't know yet. Um, I you could just refer to the parabola. Yeah. All right, find a value for A and B that will ensure that it's both continuous and differentiable. Okay. Many times students hate this one because of the A's and B's. If we ever throw A's, B's, and K's into a problem, you guys are like, I don't know, I don't know how to do it. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, think about it. In order for something to be continuous, it means where this parabola leaves off, this line has to pick up in that same spot because I have to be able to draw it without lifting my pen. Okay, so for the whole word about continuous, it means ax squared has to equal 6x minus b at x equals 3. That value that's given there where it, where it breaks from 1 to the next. So plug a 3 in for the x's and you get 9a equals 18 minus b. You get an expression. Okay, That's for it being continuous. What about differentiable? Where it's differentiable, it means that its slope has to be the same at x equals 3. Okay, Something is not differentiable if it does this, where there's a corner, right? But if it instead does this, where the line would be like tangent with the same slope at that point, this line does not have the same slope as that parabola if it continues. So their slopes have to be the same. In order for their slopes to be the same, that means the derivatives would have to equal each other. So what's the derivative of ax squared? has to equal, what's the derivative of 6x minus b at x equals 3. So both things have to occur in order to be continuous and differentiable. Slopes have to be the same, and they have to equal each other at that x value. So now plug that x value in here, I get 2 times a times 3, which is 6a equals 6. Divide by 6, I get a is 1. Then you can take this and pop it in over here, and it will unlock what b is. So 9 equals 18 minus b. Subtract 9 from both sides. I get negative b equals 0, b equals 0. So b equals 0, and a equals 1. What? Oh, <laughs> you know what I did? <laughs> no, here's what I did. I didn't tell you. That is so not right. But... I subtracted the 18 already in my head and got negative 9. So then when I subtracted it again, I, I, I don't know, I only subtracted 9 when I did that. 9 minus 9. <laughs> uh, no, I'm supposed to subtract 18, not, not uh, <laughs> 9. I did. I only subtracted 9 when I did that. There we go. B is 9. Is that better? And A is 1. <laughs> All right, questions on that. So do you see how that's not difficult, right? It looks more difficult than what it is. But if you know what continuous means and you know what differentiable means, 
then it's not a difficult problem. All right, find dy dx if y equals 1 minus cotangent x over sine x. You could do this problem two ways, but you have to simplify as much as possible, okay? Option one is quotient rule. Option two is to rewrite it, 1 over sine and cotangent over sine, and simplify, okay? So which way do you want me to do it? Say it again. What did you say? Okay. Y prime equals derivative of the top. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of negative cotangent is cosecant squared of x, right? Because the two negatives cancel each other, right? So that's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Again, I'm going to do my derivative of the bottom first because it's smaller. That way, when I distribute the negative with it, it's going to be fine. The derivative of the bottom here is just cosine x times the top. All divided by the bottom squared. Okay. Now, cosecant squared means 1 over sine squared x times sine of x. So that reduces to 1 over sine of x or cosecant of x for that first piece. This negative cosine distributes to both. That gives me negative cosine of x plus cosine of x cotangent of x. So minus cosine of x plus cosine of x cotangent. I'll divide it by sine squared of x. So now the question becomes, does this simplify at all? Okay. That is a correct answer. But how you can tell is to kind of start writing these with just cosines and sines. This one here could be cosine squared over sine. If I wanted to get rid of the cosine and sine denominators there, I can multiply everything by cosine sine. You can multiply the top by cosine sine and the bottom by cosine sine. I don't know as though this is going to do a whole lot, though. Distributing to the first one, it gives me sine. Distributing to the second, it's minus cosine squared sine. And distributing to the third one, it's cosine cubed. Oops, plus. Cosine cubed of x over cosine of x sine cubed of x. I don't think that's necessarily any better. Yeah. For which one? Oh, I did do. What am I thinking? This guy right here is 1 over sine. Oops. So let me uh, erase this here. Because that changes this. Still, I don't know if it's going to do a whole lot for us, though. I just have to multiply by sine of x on the top and bottom. which is 1 minus sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x over sine cubed x. But that doesn't simplify at all. Yeah, I, so, I mean, for this one here, I think this answer right here is just as good as any. Let's look at it the other way. The, other, the original problem was 1 minus cotangent over sine. 1 minus cotangent over sine. So we can do 1 over sine of x, which is the same as cosecant x, minus cosine over sine is cosine x over sine x divided by sine x. Right? 
I mean, you could change it. You could just keep it cotangent over sine, or you could write it as cosine over sine squared. Again, I don't think, I don't think one way is, is better than another. You know? So I was looking to see if maybe something canceled there, but it doesn't. Sometimes this, like if this would have been tangent over sine, tangent is sine over cosine divided by sine, that those signs would have ended up reducing, you know, in it. But this one they did not. I haven't even taken a derivative yet, but you'd still have a quotient rule in it. So if that's the case, I'd just do the quotient rule right from the beginning. You know, but it doesn't hurt to look because sometimes things reduce, you know. Okay, next one is a power chain rule on this. So the negative four comes out front and knocks down by one. And what's on the inside? Remains the same. But then don't forget to peel that away and multiply by the derivative of the inside. There's two terms, so I need a parenthesis ready for two terms. Derivative of negative 8x cubed would be negative 24x squared. Derivative of 7x squared plus 14x. So this answer, you could leave it a few ways. You could do, you could, it had a negative exponent to begin with, so you can leave it. That's option one. You could have this over this. Change it to a positive five. You could distribute the negative four to both of those. That's 96x squared minus 4056x over negative x cubed, 8x cubed plus 7x squared to the fifth. Like on my answer key, I like have each of these because people stop in all di at all different places. You know, so it just makes it easier for me to put all the different answers that I can. Any of those are correct. Next one, find the equation of the line normal. What's normal? <coughs> perpendicular to the tangent. So we have to figure out what the perpendicular slope is. We also need a point. In this problem, only the x value of the point was given as well. So I need to take and I need to plug pi in for that to get the y value. Negative 2 pi minus pi times cosine of pi. What's cosine of pi? So negative pi times negative 1 is positive pi, and negative 2 pi plus pi is negative pi. So there's the point. But I need the slope as well. So I take the derivative of negative 2x, negative 2. Then when I take the derivative of this next part, and please watch here, because many of you missed this step on one of the problems yesterday. This is a product rule, and you recognize that as a product rule. That's not the problem. It's this sign right here. Make sure you keep that sign with that first number. So the derivative of negative x is negative 1 times the second plus the first, which is negative x, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this ends up giving me that y prime is negative 2 minus cosine of x plus x sine of x. And many people had a sign error on the second one. Not the first one, but the second piece right there. That sign doesn't just come down. It goes to both. All right, now I need to figure out when x is pi. So I get negative 2 minus cosine of pi plus pi times sine of pi. 
Well, cosine of pi is negative 1. So this is negative 2 minus negative 1. And this is plus pi times 0, because sine of pi is 0. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And then from there, that is the slope. What would the perpendicular slope be? One. So I'm going to use that and this right here to come up with the equation of the normal line. So y plus pi equals 1 times x minus pi. And you can stop right there. You can leave. Question. If you messed up on that sign right there that and it had a negative there instead of a positive, it wouldn't have had an impact on this problem because sine of pi is zero and zero times anything is zero. But on the one yesterday it made a difference because it wasn't a sign. So be careful. Uh, this direction says find f prime of x. And I have two different ones so that you can see what the exponents in different places mean. Okay? If you see a power on a trig function, do not leave it like that. Rewrite it. Pull it all the way out to the outside. However, for this one, if the power is inside these parentheses, there is nothing you can do. You do not pull that one out. Okay. From here, we then take the derivative. The 4 comes out front and knocks down by 1. And what's on the inside stays the same. And that's the mistake that people make right there. They forget to keep that guy the same. But then you peel that layer away. Now you're dealing with the secant. What's the derivative of secant? Secant times tangent. So we have secant of x cubed, tangent of x cubed. And then you peel that layer away. Now you go to the x cubed. The derivative of x cubed, 3x squared. And then clean up your mess. The 3x cubed times the 4 is 12x cubed. The secant x cubed cubed and to the first power means secant to the 4th of x cubed. And then the tangent of x cubed. That is your derivative. Oh, where did I get a cube? It, it should be squared, yes. It's the same as that guy right there. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, now, this next one, we just start on the outside. There's no power on the outside of this at all. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine where the inside stays the same. Then you peel that layer away. Now you multiply by the derivative of this. The 4 comes out front and knocks down by 1, and what's on the inside stays the same. Then you peel that layer away, multiply by the derivative of 6x minus 1, which is 6. So let's see. Cleaning it up, the negative, 4 times 6 is 24. You get sine of 6x minus 1 to the 4th, like so, and then times 6x minus 1 cubed. Many times this answer is also pulled to the front, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. You know, as long as you don't combine these two together right here. Final answer. And then find the derivative of 5 to the x squared plus 2x minus 1. 
This is your rule for a to the x. The derivative of a to the x is a to the x natural log of a. And then if there's any chain rule, you have to remember that as well. So the derivative of this is itself. It has to start with itself. But then you need times the natural log of 5. Then peel that layer away. Now you're multiplying by the derivative of that, which there's two pieces to it. or there, Well, there will be. There's three right now. But when you take the derivative, there's two pieces to it. These can in no way combine together. It just stays like that. It doesn't matter the order you have them as long as you have all three functions. Okay. As I've said before, and you need to keep doing this this year, is keep reading over your notes. Okay. Every week you should read over your notes at least once. And I'm not talking just the chapter notes. Go back to the beginning of the year and keep reading over your notes. It's going to help you in December when it comes time for an exam because you're refreshing your mind constantly of your notes. Okay? And then you see, you know, examples, of course, like that too. I think there's one more down here. An inverse, cotangent inverse. All right, so what comes to mind when you see cotangent inverse? What's the shell? Let's see. Yeah. I mean, that would be cosecant inverse. You got it. Okay. And that x squared is whatever's here squared. But then peel that layer away, multiply by the derivative of the inside of that, which is 6x. So you end up with negative 6x over 1 plus 9x to the 4. Do the 6 and the 9 reduce? Do the x and the x to the 4th reduce? Only if you can factor that out from both the numerator and denominator. Okay? You guys did good yesterday not reducing things that you, you know, no, no illegal math. There was, I think, one person that did it. Okay. So I, I think we have most of you, you know, solved from that issue from your past. All right. Test day two tomorrow.